Hello guys, this is Indian Medical and in this video, we are going to discuss about Entropion. Entropion is abnormal inversion of eyelid, usually lower eyelid towards the globe. It can lead to abrasion of cornea by inwardly directed lashes which can result in ulceration and secondary infection. Entropion is usually acquired as a result of involutional or cicatrical processes. This picture shows a case of Entropion. Entropion can occasionally be congenital. Now let us discuss about the various types of entropion. First, let us see about involutional entropion. It is the most common form of entropion. It results from inferior retracted dysfunction with tissue laxity and possibly overwrite of preceptal orbicularis over pretarsal orbicularis. This picture shows a case of involutional entropion. Now let us discuss the clinical features which are common to all types of entropion. There will be foreign body sensation photophobia, blepharospasm, epiphora, inverted lid which can be transient or permanent, there can be pseudotrichiasis, trichiasis means misdirected lashes and in case of entropion there will be pseudotrichiasis. There can also be keratopathy and panis formation. Now let us discuss the specific clinical features for involutional entropion. We have to do test for inferior retractor weakness or dehiscence. In case of involutional entropion, there can be a reduced movement of lower lid in down gaze. We have to do test for lid laxity and speed of snapback. We have to pull away from globe and greater than 10 mm is abnormal and it indicates lid laxity. We have to do lateral canthal tendon laxity test. We have to pull the lid medially and greater than 2 mm movement of canthal angle is abnormal. We have to do medial canthal tendon laxity. In this case, we pull the lid laterally and greater than 2 mm movement of punctum is abnormal. Now, let us discuss the treatment of involutional entropion. We have to do surgery for specific defect. We can do lid shortening for horizontal laxity and reattachment of retractors. Botox can be given while awaiting surgery. It is important to remember that orbicularis, that is these type procedures are no longer considered effective for involutional entropion. This table summarizes the various treatment options for entropion. The first type of procedures are retractor reattachment procedures. First is everting suture plus or minus horizontal shortening. It is indicated in retracted dehiscence with or without lid laxity. Here we put everting sutures from fornix to below lash line plus or minus lateral tarsal strip. Next is modified Jones plication. It is indicated in retracted dehiscence with low horizontal lid laxity and it is usually reserved for recurrence. Here we do reattachment or tightening of the retractors via subsidiary incision. The next type of procedures is horizontal lid shortening procedures. Lateral tarsal strip is indicated for lateral or generalized laxity. Here the lid is shortened laterally and tightened and it is elevated at lateral canthus. Next is wedge excision. It is indicated in lid laxity and no tendon laxity. Here we do full thickness pentagon excision. Next is Kunt Szymanowski's procedure. It is indicated in lid laxity, no tendon laxity, and when there is excess skin. Here we do wedge excision along with lower lid blepharoplasty. Next is medial canthal resection. It is indicated when there is medial laxity only. Here, the lid is shortened laterally and tightened at the medial canthus. The next type of procedures are posterior lamella reconstruction procedures which are usually done for cases of cicatrical entropion which we will be discussing in the upcoming slides. First one is transverse tarsotomy. It is indicated in moderate loss of posterior lamella. Here we do tarsal fracture and eversion of distal tarsus. Next is heart pellet mucosal graft. It is indicated in severe loss of posterior lamella. Here we do tarsal fracture plus eversion of distal tarsus plus limited separation of lamellae plus graft to posterior lamella. The next type of procedure is limitation of orbicularis override that is quicker procedure. It is indicated in lid laxity and retracted dehiscence. Here we do everting sutures and full thickness lid split plus wedge excision to shorten the lid. Now let us discuss about cicatrical entropion. 
it is uncommon it occurs due to scarring vertically which shortens the posterior lamella the causes of cicatrical entropion are cicatrical conjunctivitis which can be due to trachoma ocular cicatrical femphigoid and other bullous diseases it can also occur due to chemical injuries radiotherapy trauma and severe blepharitis the clinical features specific for cicatrical entropion are in chronic cases there will be loss of plica semilunaris loss of pharnesial depth formation of symblephron or ankyloblephron and dry eye signs in case of trachoma there will be subtarsal fibrosis in acute cases there can be papillary conjunctivitis subconjunctival vesicles injection and it will show an evolving picture now let us discuss the medical treatment for cicatrical entropion medically the cicatrizing process should be optimally controlled especially before surgical intervention it is also important to remember that excessive surgical delay may allow trichiasis to aggravate conjunctival inflammation now let us discuss the surgical treatment options for cicatrical entropion we can do retractor reattachment procedures for mild cases transverse tarsotomy that is tarsal fracture or mucosal graft can be done if there is moderate or severe loss of posterior lamella recently anterior lamellar excision has evolved as a simple treatment that does not appear to aggravate inflammatory process now let us discuss about congenital entropion it is very rare it usually results with time and no intervention is usually needed in congenital entropion the pretarsal orbicularis is hypertrophied forming a marked ridge usually in congenital entropion unlike other cases of entropion the lashes don't damage the cornea but recurrent infections are common now let us discuss about upper lid entropion it is usually seen in cicatricial diseases like trachoma it also affects cardiac integrity the treatment of upper lid entropion depends on underlying disease and severity of entropion anterior lamellar repositioning plus or minus gray line split or anterior lamellar excision can be done here anterior lamellar is everted with lashes to prevent cardiac abrasion if you have any suggestions please let me know in the comment section for more such videos please check out my playlists thank you